Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. We have y prime plus y double prime equals y triple prime, which means we have a function and when we add the first and the second derivatives, we get the third derivative. Can you think of a function that satisfies this off the top of your head? Try it. I'll be presenting two methods, even though one of the methods will probably be incomplete. But I just want to show you the idea because it's really cool. So let's start with the first method. For our first method, we're going to use an infinite series to solve this problem. So we're going to assume that y can be replaced as an infinite series. And how do you express an infinite series? I'm talking about something like this. We have a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared plus a sub 3x to the third power. This You could call this a power series, or you could also call this an infinite polynomial, right? And infinite polynomials, as you know, can be used to express several different types of functions, like e to the power x, like cosine x, or anything like that. So let's go ahead and see how we can apply it to this scenario. But you can do this in several different ways. You can use the sigma notation, for example. In sigma notation, I could write this as a sub n, x to the power n, n goes from 0 to infinity, right? You could also use n equals 1 to infinity, but then you have to use a sub n minus 1, which is something that I don't necessarily like. But anyways, that's one way to approach it. But the million dollar question is, this is just going to represent y, right? What is y prime? So that's what you need to do. So for what, to find y prime, you basically need to take this term and differentiate it. But one thing that you need to realize, yes, you can differentiate the general term, but when you differentiate it, the constant will disappear. So the index needs to be shifted. Let me explain what that means. When you differentiate a sub n times x to the power n, it's going to look like this. You're going to bring the n to the front, n times a sub n times x to the power n minus 1. Now, this is going to be y prime in the general sense, but when you put the sigma here, you can't start at n equals 0 because that would give you x to the power negative 1, which obviously does not exist in a power series, right? So what you need to do is you need to start at n equals 1 so that when you differentiate an infinite polynomial, notice that the first term is a constant, its derivative is zero, and the derivative of a linear term is going to be a constant, which is what we have here for n equals one. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So y prime is going to be the following. Every time, do not forget to move the index up, okay? And we're going to do this two more times. So that's y prime. Great. Now, what about y double prime? Well, we have to do it again, but remember, you have to start now with n equals 2 because you're going to lose another term. You're going to bring this over. It's going to be n times n minus 1 times a sub n x to the power n minus 2. Notice that every time you differentiate, you're going to lose a power, which is normal, right? And then finally, we do need the third derivative, which is going to start at n equals 3 to infinity. And then n, you're going to move this to the front, n n minus 1, n minus 2, a sub n, x to the power n minus 3. Great. Now we have everything we need. We have all the ingredients. We can go ahead and cook them, right? So what we need is now just plug these into our equation. So we know that y prime plus y double prime is equal to y triple prime. So now we're going to go ahead and add these. Now adding these will be pretty interesting. Let me go ahead and write this down. This is going to be a n a sub n x to the power n minus 1. And remember, this starts at n equals 1 because the original starts at 0. So this is 1 to infinity. Now this plus the second derivative, which starts at n equals 2 to infinity. And notice that you differentiate it. So it's going to be n times n minus 1 times a sub n times x to the power n minus 2. And this is supposed to equal y triple prime, which is this one right here, right? We're going to need to copy that, but let's just go ahead and pretend that we have that already, or we can just, I guess, get rid of this, 
and take this over just being lazy here we're gonna move that over here and then just put an equal sign maybe like this here we go so this sum is equal to that make sense now what is the critical part here you're gonna be adding sigmas so infinite sums right you have to be very careful first of all you cannot just add them because you have different indices right another thing you need to be careful about is you can take care of the indices easily because the the biggest one or the third derivative starts with n equals three so you can expand two terms here and you can expand one of the terms here so you can separately evaluate them but then you would need to do something else let me show you real quick because this is going to take a long time and i really want to go uh, with the second method okay but anyways let me show you the basics so we can go ahead and actually expand this for n equals 1. This is going to be 1, a1, x to the power 0, which means you're going to get a1, right? Which makes sense, obviously. And then for n equals 2, this will be 2, a sub 2, x to the power 1, which is just x. And then you can just continue. The rest of it is going to be n equals 3 to infinity n, a sub n, x to the power n minus 1. This is how you can expand it a little bit. Why did we stop at n equals 3? Because this is what we have here. So they all have to start at the same index. So we're going to expand one term here. It's going to look like this. Let's see. Plus, if n is equal to 2, it's going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. And then a sub 2, x to the power 0, which is just a constant. And then the rest, it'll just going to be sigma, but it'll start at n equals 3 because we're already taking care of n equals 2 case, okay? And n minus 1, a sub n, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the rest is already known from here. We'll take care of that later. Or maybe we can move this and make more room, right? We're going to need a lot of room, hopefully. Anyways, I think this is fine. We can leave it at that. Now, we can always come back to this, okay? The third part is just going to stay the same. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to add these terms together. a1 plus 2a2 plus 2a2x. And then let me go ahead and show you how we can add these two things. And then hopefully you can go from there. n equals 3 to infinity n times a n. Actually, you know what? I think I have a better idea. Forget about this because I just thought of a better idea. To take care of this let's go ahead and see if we can do this in a simpler way and i think we can oops i erased too much okay now let's bring it back and just erase this part okay i think i'm gonna need the uh, white triple prime for my solution okay great now let's go ahead and do this now notice that the powers of x are different so we want them to be the same how can you do that you can change the index, right? For example, uh, you can replace n with something like k minus 2, okay? And if n becomes k minus 2, k minus 2 equals 1 becomes k equals 3. So you can write this as k equals 3 to infinity. And then, of course, all the n's will be replaced with k minus 2. It's going to be like k minus 2 times a sub k minus 2 times x to the power k. So, sorry, k minus 3, I meant, okay, replacing m with k minus 2. And then what's going to happen is that you're going to have all the same powers so that you can add them. But that's a long story. So let's continue with the second method because the first method is for you to complete. There's probably an easier way to handle it. I just couldn't pull it. So the second method works as follows. We have the sum again. Second and the first derivative gives us the third. And now here's what we're going to do. Because of the ways the powers are, I'm going to assume that my solution is going to look like e to the power kx. And this makes sense a lot. You know why? Because when you differentiate something like this, you're going to get what's called a characteristic equation. And let's go ahead and do that. The first derivative is going to be k e to the power kx. The second derivative is going to be k squared e to the power kx. And then the third derivative is going to be k cubed e to the power kx. The cool thing about e to the power kx is it always comes up so that you can kind of find a common factor here. Does that make sense? It's going to turn this 
differential equation into a polynomial equation, which is what's really cool about it. So let's go ahead and replace y prime with k e to the kx plus y double prime is k squared e to the power kx and finally k cubed e to the power kx. Obviously, e to the power kx is never zero. So what you can do is you can factor out e to the kx and you can also factor out an additional k here which is going to give you 1 plus k and you don't need this anymore because we already taken out and this will give you k cubed e to the power kx since k e to the power kx cannot be zero we can go ahead and cancel them out and guess what we end up with we end up with an equation like this which is k plus k squared equals k cubed you could also write it with the fact that form doesn't matter no big deal eventually we're gonna to have to bring everything down or everything to the same side anyways. Let's go ahead and bring these down, k cubed minus k squared minus k equals zero. How do you solve an equation like this? It's polynomial, but it's factorable, so it's nice. And we get a quadratic equation from here. Beautiful, right? First of all, k equals zero is a solution, which means y equals one is a solution. And we'll talk about that later. Let's leave it at that for now. But this one is going to give us more interesting solutions, don't you think? So this will basically be like uh, follows. Uh, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac, which is going to give you 5. Uh-oh, the golden ratio comes up. Divide by 2. Okay, those are the k values, which means we have two solutions. Uh, y equals e to the power 1 plus root 5 over 2 multiply by x. Another solution would be e to the power 1 minus root 5 over 2 times x. And of course, we have the y equals 1. But we're going to put these together. We're going to take a linear combination, which means we're going to use constants like this because each of these are particular solutions. So the general solution can be written as c sub 1 times 1, which is a constant c sub 1, plus c sub 2 e to the power 1 plus root 5 over 2 multiplied by x plus c sub 3, which is another constant, e to the power 1 minus root 5 over 2 times x. And guess what? This is going to give you the general solution to this equation. Now, if we use series, would we find something like this? Probably not, because this is way too complicated for a series, don't you think? But anyways, at least we tried. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And also remember, you can become a member and support the channel. Until next time, bye-bye.